Good morning, everyone. In this session, we're going to cover part one of SOX 302 certification setup. Today, we're going to talk about the SOX 302 certification process and how to set it up. Once we have an overview of the SOX requirements, we can focus on building a scalable certification process. In this series, we go through the four steps on how to do it practically, and we'll also tackle some tips on how to make things automated and scalable. So in part one, we answer what are the SOX 302 requirements? What does the SOX 302 setup process look like? What are the outputs from planning and who owns the certification process? So let's dive in. What is section 302 of SOX? One requirement is for the CEO and CFO to evaluate the design and operating effectiveness of disclosure controls over financial reporting. And this is done on a quarterly basis. The disclosure controls include internal controls over financial statements. Now, once they've assessed the disclosure controls over financial reporting and they found that it operates effectively, they have to sign a certification letter in the 10Q or the 10K. And this happens like clockwork every quarter, every year end. Here's an example of a certification from the CEO, and this is available to the public. Everything in the certification letter can be found on the web. Any 10K or 10Q that you go to, you should be able to go to the various exhibits. And each of the sentences in the certification can't be changed. It's a standard form that the SEC requires. So next is, what does a certification process look like? We suggest four basic steps. Step one is define and plan. Step two is design and train people. Step three is deliver the questionnaires, and step four is document the results. So what we're going to do is actually break down in step one even more details, and we have the deliverables and even the time required. Now the time required is the minimum. We could actually do a lot of this in a day if we were focused and had all the right people in place. Usually it takes about a week because we have to talk to certain people to get buy-in and to think through certain consequences or list of things that have to happen and the downstream implications. So the first step is to identify the key stakeholders to involve and the key stakeholders are a combination of people who are going to be signing the certifications, people who are going to be administering the process, and the disclosure committee that you have to report to. Next is to identify the certifiers. Remember the requirement is for the CEO and the CFO to sign the certification. Usually what they want to do before they sign the certification is to make sure that the people who directly report to them or supporting them are telling them everything they need to know that has to be disclosed in the 10K or the 10Q. This means you have to identify people during the planning process so that you don't forget anyone or leave out particular functions in the organization. You also want to build an annual and a quarterly schedule of when to do the various tasks. And you then assign the roles and responsibilities. Who's going to do certain things and when? This ensures that you have a nice handoff and things don't fall through the cracks because you may think, oh, the paralegal is supposed to send it out when really it's someone in finance or the general counsel is supposed to review when it might be the CFO. And this is based on the roles and responsibilities of each person. And you then also create a timeline for the project. And for each of these activities, then, you get the deliverables, which is the overall certification process, a project timeline, a list of the certifiers, and the end is a memo explaining the rationale for selecting the certifiers. So the next question we get is, who owns the certification process? The answer is the finance or legal department. We really suggest the legal department lead this process and has strong support or administration by the finance team. This is so that you have client attorney privileges in case a, a messy issue comes up in the certification process 
or some of the responses you want that uh, client attorney privilege. Now, if legal leads this process and runs it, someone from finance should be reading the responses for accounting impl implications like revenue commitments, revenue rec recognition, or accruals and disclosures. If finance leads the process, someone from legal should be reading the responses for legal implications and protections and make sure that there are certain things that finance may not be thinking of that legal thinks broader on protecting the company, protecting officers, and other regulatory implications. That's it for part one of the 302 certification setup process. See you next time.